How's it going YouTubers? This is Bingbox again and we have another Let's Demo. This is by request and this is the multiplayer version of the Battlefield 4 Let's Demo. So as always, we are going to go into our options and go into our video first. Alright, so I'm already loaded into a game. I'm just going to show you the video settings first. So I just want to show you that I didn't really change anything. Everything is almost exactly the same from the single player version of the settings. The only things that I changed is vertical sync. Vertical sync is now off. I couldn't stand it in the single player, but for some reason, it's okay when you're in the action in multiplayer. So, it's acceptable. There is some bit screen tearing, but, you know, it does happen, and I'd rather have the input uh, speed. Last thing is the resolution scale, and resolution scale was at 110 to make it better resolution, and now I put it at 100. Alright, so that's going to make it you know, just a little less... Uh, worth a little less in terms of scale. Okay, so this is at 100 and even now I notice that uh, there isn't really that much of a difference in terms of graphics now that I put it down. I think I notice a lot more than uh, I notice all the environments and I actually have time to appreciate all the graphics. During multiplayer it's actually so fast paced that you can't even notice it that much. So all the little things like screen tearing that you may or may not notice and it's really not, you know, detrimental to your gameplay. Actually, I don't really notice it that much. It only happens, only happens sometimes. Um, but granted, it does happen more, obviously, than having the vertical sync on. That being said, I don't really mind having the vertical sync off. Uh, I do notice a little bit while I'm playing, but it's not terrible. It's and uh, sometimes, the settings uh, there are a few jagged edges um, but I don't think it's really terrible you know and I think these are good settings these are all high settings ultra settings or whatever so you, you can look at the last video or just pause it on this video to check out the settings again but for me the settings on these high ultra settings or whatever minus the vertical sync and minus the resolution scaling I think it looks awesome now let's talk about the frame rate so the frame rate can jump from anywhere between 80 in indoor places because the vertical sync is off and I would say uh, mid to low 40 the lowest that I would go in really intense explosion fireplace. For the most part I would say the game in general outside in the party area like this you can see hovers around the 50s it does happen to drop between you know 45 to 52 ish in some intense scenes to me, I think this is playable, and I think having the awesome graphic settings is really great. I don't really notice that many jagged edges from my gameplay. I was looking at it over and over again, and I didn't really notice jagged edges from not having anti-aliasing on. And a lot of people actually, if their computer cannot handle it, a lot of people bump their settings down so that they can have better FPS, because better FPS is way more important, as well as ping. Ping is also very important in your internet connection. But having a good internet connection and having solid FPS at least around 50 to 60 is very important for people. 60 is better, and I kind of wish that it could be 60 at these settings. But I like my settings right here, and I seem to be doing okay. I mean, I think the reason why I'm doing poorly in games is that me personally, I'm bad. And it's not because I'm the frame rate skipping, and my internet con connection is great. My internet connection varies between, I don't know, 38 to 50 um, uh, ping. So that's pretty good for me. Uh, for the graphics, I think it looks awesome. It runs really well, especially in indoor places. You can tell that it's usually around 55, 60, and that's great. That's really good. So if you want to bump these settings higher up, that's okay. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about it. Bump them up and just leave the anti-aliasing off, leave the vertical sync off, and just keep your resolution at 100, especially for this laptop, MSI GS60 Pro. Okay, I don't know so much about the 3K version, but for this version, I think it'll run fine. And especially for the 3K version, I think the resolution is going to be awesome enough that you can probably turn the resolution down to 90%. That, as well as anti-aliasing, I really don't think you'll need really any anti-aliasing. Remember, I do have HBAO on, but I don't have 
the MSAA on. So for me, I really don't think you need the anti-aliasing, uh, especially for the 3K version, but for my version, which is the non-3K 1080p version, as you saw in the settings, uh, I really don't think that you need to keep the anti-aliasing on. Uh, I think a lot of people keep that on if they want the ultra setting, and it's automatically default into the ultra setting, but it's not necessary. And people don't realize that. I think that's the problem. So yeah, so this is basically why I'm doing this, is to show you guys that you know there are better options than just setting everything to the default. You should play with them, you should mess with them. If you want more frame rates, you can definitely mess with some of these other things. I mean, if you don't care about shadows or, uh, or just textures as much, textures, or if you don't care about the particles as much, you can definitely lower the settings and definitely hit 50, I mean 60 frames per second solid. Uh, right now, I'm um, between, you know, 50s and 60. I think that's pretty good for me. Sometimes it's like 45 to 50, like I said before, but it's still very playable. And I still think I have a pretty good response time in terms of uh, gameplay. So I'm not so worried about it. So you'll see in this whole video, I have a bunch of like four or five maps that I'm showing you guys. And I'm not going to be talking throughout the whole thing. It's, you know, not much more to talk about. I've already explained a lot of this stuff and how I feel about this game on this laptop. There's not much more to say. So for a lot of the time, I'm just going to sign it and I'll let you guys watch. You guys can skip ahead definitely, but I am showing you four to five maps just so you can get a good feel for the types of environments. You know, there's a bunch of different environments that I went to, indoors, outdoors. Some maps have more smoke, some maps have more crumbling buildings, explosions. Um, you know, some maps have more outdoor settings and some maps have more indoors. And that is what it is. So that's why I want to show you as many possible different scenarios as possible. Um, and as always, the, the gun and the, uh, and the character models always look great. They really look good. The gun model looks awesome. Well, I want to reiterate again that you're, when you're playing multiplayer in Battlefield, you're not so much more worried about the graphics because you're, you don't have time to worry about them. So, you know, in my opinion, if you want to bring those graphics in right now, you're still going to have a great experience. And uh, as long as, you know, these graphics aren't messing with the game, right? That's what's more important, you know, because multiplayer is very, very fast paced and you don't have time to appreciate everything that much. But it, I mean, granted, it does look really great. It does look great when, you know, you have really great settings and you're playing multiplayer online, fast-paced with your friends or whoever, and it does look really awesome to have those graphics. You know, just walking down when you have you know, a second to spare, it still looks really awesome. Now, again, I also want to remind you that I'm recording, so even though the frame rates are pretty close to the recording frame rates, I am probably losing, I would say, one to three frames. Not so much. Okay, so I'm not going to blame the recording for the computer's ability. But you do have to keep in mind that I am losing just a few, not many, just a few frames per second when I am recording. So you can probably expect the frames to be maybe you know, one to three higher than what you see here. I also want to reiterate uh, that something that I have in the past that this is also on YouTube and it's not going to be the smoothest gameplay that you see in front of your eyes but what I'm telling you and what I've written down in the description below that's what it is and you don't have to worry about it and if any questions definitely ask me uh, because you know I've been playing this game for a little while but not that long uh, but in terms of graphics and comparison and all that definitely let me know and I will definitely try to answer your questions about it Plan to get this laptop and you're worried about the overheating. I think that's another problem that people also talk about. The overheating, uh, I would say at least get a laptop fan. Um, because overheating and getting too hot will make your laptop throttle its performance. And this throttles at about 92 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot. Uh, so I would say at least try to get some type of uh, cooling mat or fan or something at least even to put on top of the lap or on the bottom of the laptop, the laptop on top. 
and so that it can have some ventilation on the bottom. Now, the fans, as many of you may know, draw from the top and send them down to the sides and out the bottom and the back. Okay, so they draw from the top, so there isn't really a good solution for sending air into the fan's direction, move. you know, the normal direction. But on the bottom, there are still vents, and on the back, you can still access part of the vent if you have a decent fan. For me, I have a Milkwell X3, I want to say. I think it is a 3. That's the old one, it's not the slim one. So I do recommend you put this at least on top of the fan while you're playing, because uh, it just needs that extra, you know, aluminum service to vent out just a little bit. Now, the Milkwell X3 actually has... And I can leave this... this boom fan the link down below so you guys can check it out. I got it for like $30 to $40 or something, something like that. You don't need a crazy expensive one. I've seen pretty crazy expensive ones, but this one is plenty big, big enough for your laptop, definitely, and it actually has two leg settings. Now, it's not the most comfortable playing on top of a fan because it does raise your wrist, and some people have a problem with that. But what I do want to say is that you there are two settings for the legs. Uh, one is just flat without the legs open, and then another one with the legs, and that gives you even more venting from the bottom. Right now, when I'm playing, I only have the legs down. I don't have the and I want you to know that you guys should get something to vent this fan out, especially when you're playing things like Battlefield, uh, Titanfall, and anything that gets really, really intense, really graphically intense. Things like uh, Thief also. Just really intense games, I think you need to have something on there. Sometimes I play short sessions with uh, Titanfall that aren't so long, maybe like an hour or so, and that's okay. You, you're you not going to overheat too much like that. But you want to make sure that it has enough vents on the bottom. Your laptop does have a couple vents on the bottom, so that even if you have your fan on, which I suggest you do turn it on, uh, it doesn't matter though. Even if you have your fan on, it will you know send some type of air into it. And definitely don't have this laptop on a wooden table. Wood does not absorb heat very well. I mean, it absorbs heat very well. It just keeps the heat all there. And it doesn't dissipate. So that's a problem. So basically, I'm just going to let you guys uh, know of this gameplay. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. And I will just run this video and let you guys check it out. Now, I really enjoy this scene right here because the fire is really intense and the computer renders it really fantastically. The heat waves come out of the thing really great. Really great. Now, 
now this is the last one that we're gonna look at this is the last map that we're gonna look at i forget what it's called um but if you guys have ever played battlefield or you've Here's seen any ammo. videos this is probably one of the most graphically Give intense maps um, that i've played of battlefield 4 because this map and the levolution changes so much the weather changes so much, it's incredible. And there's a lot of wind and a lot of sand moving around and a lot of rain. It looks incredible in person. I mean, you may not be able to get the whole experience right here, but when you play it on this laptop or any computer, this map looks incredible. Now, so that being said, it is going to be more graphically challenging for your, uh, your hardware on this laptop and for any computer, actually. So the frame rates are going to drop a little bit. As you can see, you know, it does run between anywhere between the low 40s to the high 40s in these really open parts, especially when the rain and the wind is going because the typhoon's hitting sometimes. Uh, yeah, it does happen like that sometimes. But at the same time, when you're moving in some areas that you think might be pretty graphically intense and pretty taxing on your hardware, it actually runs at a solid, I don't know, uh, I would say, probably 55, around 55 for some of the areas that you find might be pretty intense. So that's it anyway, guys. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Leave a like down below, subscribe for new content in the future, and let me know what else you guys want to see, because I would be happy to make these videos. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.